Good morning. It is day two in our journey where we're looking at cave people, uh, various situations where people find themselves in caves. We're still in the Old Testament and we're going forward from where we were in Genesis. Israel now has become a nation uh, led by Moses and uh, Moses dies off and then he passes the leadership baton to Joshua and Joshua is now leading the people of God into the land of promise, the land of Canaan that God said He was going to give them to be the, the basis of, of their national identity. Where they've started uh, their conquest of the promised land, they've, they've taken over Jericho, they lose a battle in, in Ai, the city of Ai because of disobedience, and they make a bargain with the Gibeonites, all the stuff you can read about on your own in the book of Joshua, uh, beginning in chapter 1 through, through chapter 10. So we're going to pick up in chapter 10, and what happens is this. Some of these Canaanite kings now realize they're, they're in a battle that God has given them 400 years to repent, and they have not. And so now God is displacing them. He's, he's judging the Canaanite tribes. These Canaanite tribes practiced what we would recognize today as, as a form of Satanism. I mean, it was, it was gross stuff with child sacrifice and all kinds of things. So God's pushing them out of the land through the Israelites. Five of these kings, though, that are in the land... They decide they're going to fight back and fight hard, and so they attack the Gibeonites who Joshua and the Israelites had made a deal with. Joshua then gets word from the Gibeonites, please come help us, come rescue us, you made a deal with us. So the Israelites go and they fight against these five kings of Canaan, and they defeat them soundly. It's, it's one of the most famous portions of Scripture in all the Bible. A lot of people have trouble with it. It's when in the midst of the battle, Joshua ask God to cause the, the time to literally stand still. The scripture says there was never a day like, like it before it or after it where the sun stood still for a large part of the day. There have been astronomical studies where they find a, a, a warped part of our calendar. That, that's a whole different subject. But anyway, this battle wages on. But these five kings, and this is the point I want to make, these are five kings. These are men that were used to power. When they spoke, people listened. Their word was law. They lived in luxury. Everything about their life made them feel in control, made them feel special, made them feel different. That's the way these five kings had lived their life. But now the battle had turned against them. God's judgment had fallen upon them. And all of their sense of power was about to come to grips with reality. So they end up in this condition. Let me read to you now from Joshua chapter 10, verse 16. Now the five kings had fled and hidden in the cave at Makeda. Uh, when Joshua was told that the five kings had been hiding in the cave at Makeda, he said, roll large rocks up to the mouth of the cave and post some men there to guard it, but don't stop pursue your enemies and attack. So they, they go on fighting with the battle. Then in verse 22, Joshua now has finished the battle. He says, open the mouth of the cave, bring those five kings out to me. So they bring the five kings out and Joshua has his men literally put their feet on the necks of these kings. They're not killing them. They're just putting their foot. So here are these guys that all of their life, we don't know how old they were. They might have been, you know, 40, 50, 60, who knows? But they had lived with the sense that they were in control all their life, that they were the movers and they were the shakers and that they had the power. And power was about violence and control and force and intimidation. And all of a sudden, they find themselves hiding in a cave powerless. And now they've got ordinary soldiers standing on them with their feet on their necks. Now, Joshua, in obedience to God, he, he executes these, these guys. These, these are enemies of God. God had given the Canaanites 400 years to repent. They did not. He executes them. So the, the lesson for us is, is this. Worldly power is like a mirage in the desert. Uh, I don't care who you are. You could be Bill Gates. You, you can be, you know, uh, the leader of a powerful nation. You could be, you know, uh, leader of China, leader of Russia, leader of the United States. I don't care. You could be a celebrity. You could be an athlete. You could be somebody that seems to be untouchable because of your position, your power. And you may have lived with that delusion all your life. But the truth is that kind of power is, is not real. Um, that, that power is illusory. That power can be completely abolished with, you know, one, one heartbeat, uh, one brain wave, you know, one physical problem, or in this case, 
one upheaval militarily in a country, one catastrophe physically in a nation, whether it's a volcano or you know an earthquake or whatever it might be. Power of this sort, control the power to control others through force, intimidation, chicanery, trickery, deception, this is a false sense of power. It builds a false sense of self-esteem. Jesus said real power is the power to serve those, to, to give to those in need, to serve those that have need. That's the truth about power, and true power, it's sourced in God, it comes from God. It's not dependent upon uh, the circumstances of men or nations or physical power or intimidation. And so we have to remind ourselves in this day and age we live in because we kind of worship people um, in positions of power, whether they're celebrities or whether they're athletes or whether they're leaders of nations or whether they're the wealthy people or the, the great conglomerate owners. And we can, if we're not careful, find ourselves envying them and believing that power of that sort matters. Uh, we can become envious of it. We can become angry. In fact, our anger at the power sometimes is a giveaway to our envy of the power. Don't envy it. It's all going to end up like these kings did. That kind of power is going to end up with a foot on the neck, and ultimately it's going to be um, put completely out of existence when the real power of God's goodness and love invades this planet and permeates the new heaven and the new earth. So don't be deceived by the powers that be. Uh -huh.